Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we'll be solving this amazing problem, count number of subarrays with the given sort. Now why do I call this amazing? Because every problem that you see uh, that is having subarray and sort that will be cleared if you solve this problem. Uh, so let's discuss this problem. So the problem states that you'll be given an array of integers and a number m and your task is to count the number of subarrays which will be having the ZOR of all the elements in that subarray as M. Like for the example, if you take this array 42264 and if you're given an M as a 6, so what I can say is this is one of the subarray which you consider taking ZOR of all the elements in that subarray, you'll have a ZOR as 6. The another subarray you can say as 42. If you take the all elements that is 4 and 2 and you do a ZOR of it, you'll get subarray ZOR as 6. Or else you can say that you can take this 2 to 6. Again, 2 or 2 will be 0 and 0 or 6 will be 6. While the other subarray you can say is this. So you have to count the total number of subarrays. So the answer is 4. So you need to print the total count of subarrays. As I always say, if you are in an interview, the first approach that you're going to tell the interviewer will be of the brute force. Now, what is the brute force? You know that. And if you do not know that, Probably you need to watch the Kadane's algorithm. You'll know how to generate all these subarrays. So what you need to do is you need to generate all these subarrays. So the first subarray is this. The next subarray is this. While the next subarray is this. While the next subarray is this. While the next one is this. If you just observe it as a pattern. And then the next subarray is this. 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 The next so in this way, you can get all the subarrays and out of all the subarrays, you can easily compute the ZOR. And once you have computed the ZOR of all the subarrays, you can say if that ZOR is, is equivalent to 6, you can keep on incrementing and count the number of subarrays. So you know that to generate all the subarrays, the time complexity is big O of n cube. If you follow the extreme naive solution, after that you can optimize this to big O of n square to generate all the subarrays with some observations and the space complexity will be big O of 1. Again, the interviewer will not be happy because you're giving him a n square solution. So he'll ask you to optimize it. So the optimize algorithm that we use will be similar to something what we used in the previous problem, largest subarray with zero sum. So assume that you're standing over here. So what I can say is the prefix or from the starting till here, prefix or that is basically this element, this element, this element, this element, this element, and this element. If you are standing at this index, then I can say that all the elements or is known as the prefix or, and that is stored in the variable xr. So what I can say is I am actually trying to find a subarray which has a or as six. So let's assume that this is the subarray. Let's assume, just in case, assume that this is the subarray which has a or as six. That is k. So can I say that? Obviously, this will have a ZOR as something. Let's call it Y. So can I write this? Y ZOR K is equal to XR. Yes, I can write this. And what is the other thing that I can write? I can also write it as Y equal to XR ZOR K. If I take the K on the other side, I can also write this. So what I'm getting is I do have XR for every index and I also do have K. So what I require is if I can figure out how many y's will be there if i can figure out how many y's will be there i can actually figure out how many these kind of subarrays will be there who will be giving you a zor of k now if you did not understand this roll back this portion again and hear it again now you'll understand this algorithm in a much better way when you actually see the dry run of this algorithm on this test case so if you did not understand let me explain you again just imagine that you have a patch okay and this patch is having a prefix or of XR. Now, when I say prefix or, what does that mean? That means that all the elements from here to here is having a prefix or as XR. Now, what I'm saying is, I'm requiring a subarray which will give you a or as K. So let's assume that this is the subarray. This is the subarray which is giving you a or as K. Okay, let's take the or as K. Now, what will be the or of this? Let's assume, let's assume Y. So since I know that this is the entire thing, right? So this y zor k will obviously be equal to xr. Again, that's very easy because this zor this is going to be this. I think I don't need to explain this. 
So I can also write y as xr zor k. Can I write? Yes, I can write. Now, what is the problem reduced down to? Now, imagine, imagine, just imagine you have multiple patches. Like, let's say, again, if you are having this and you say that this portion is only y and this entire portion is k, you can say that. Again, you can have the similar thing on the index that this entire is xr, but you are having entire patch as y and this much is y. So there can be multiple y for a given index. There can be multiple y's. And if there are multiple y's for a given index, because this much can be y, again, this much can be y, again, this much can be y, and there can be multiple y's. So if there are multiple y's, I can say this can be one of the subarrays. This can be one of the subarrays. And also this can be one of the subarrays. So my task actually reduces to find out how many y's are there. Because if I can figure out how many y's are there, correspondingly, I know that those many subarrays will be there, which will give me a subarray or of k. Now, if you did understand this somehow, I think you should watch the dry run. That will clear stuffs in a much, much better way. Please watch the dry run completely. So let's have the dry run of that algorithm over this test case so that you understand this in a much better way. Let's understand. So at first, you will assign a Zor to 0. And you'll also assign a count variable to 0, which will eventually give you the total number of subarrays. Now, what I can say is the initial ZOR is 0. And with this, you need to assign a hash map, which will be storing the prefix ZOR along with that, the count of how many times does it appear. You'll understand as we move forward. So at first, we are at 4. So the ZOR was 0. So what you need to do is, if the ZOR is 0, don't do anything simply 0 zor 4 so the zor will be 4 basically you're doing a prefix zor so the zor is 4 now what you need to check is does this subarray does this subarray is giving you zor as 6 no it is not giving you so what you do is you don't increment the count and you simply put this 4 over into the hash map so what you're saying is hey i have someone with a prefix zor as 4 which appears once Again, you understand this as we move forward. Next time, we have this 2. Now, when we do a 4 or 2, what we get is 6. So now, our ZOR is 6. So what I can say is, we are taking prefix ZOR. So we can surely say that this subarray, this subarray, because we are taking prefix ZOR, is the subarray which, which is giving me the ZOR as 6. So I can increment my count to 1. So I got a ZOR as 6. At the next time, what you do is, you simply check out if this y value, again, you'll understand as we move forward, what is the value of y over here? 6, zor, k is 6. So the value of y is 0. So what do you do is, you check in the frequency hash map, if 0 prefix sum appears or not. So we see it doesn't appear. So we are not going to increment our count any further. Now, since we do not have anything to increment, simply push that 6 into the hash map and say that this prefix sum appears once. At the next time, you're going to move to 2. So you're going to do a 6 or 2 and the value that you'll get is 4. So what I know is 6 or 2 is giving you 4. So this prefix or actually tells you about this subarray. So is this subarray having a or equivalent to k? No, it is not. So we are not going to increment our count. So it stays as 4. Now let's see the value of y. So the value of y is xr is 4. Zor k is 6. So what do you get is 4 Zor 6. Now what is the value of 4 Zor 6? That's 2. So what do you do is, you simply check in the frequency hash map. Does 2 exist? No, it doesn't. So we are not going to increment the value of count. And after this, we insert this into the hash map. Now since 4 already exists in the hash map, we simply increment the count of it. So what I know is, we have two prefix sum. One is this and the another is this, which is giving us a prefix Zor as 4. Now, the next time I move to 6. Now, when I move to 6, I do a 4 or 6. Very important step. And I got the ZOR value as 2. Now, what I know is this 2 actually represents the ZOR of this subarray. Now, is that equivalent to 6? No, it is not. So, I'm not going to increment our count. But here comes the algorithm into play. Now, what is XR2? So, what is your Y going to be? It's going to be 2 or 6. Now, what is your Y going to be? It's going to be XR or K, that's 2 or 6, which actually gives you 4. I got Y as 4. So what does that mean? 
if I write it properly, it means 4, 2, 2, 6. What I'm saying is, till here, my ZOR was 2. And what I know is, till here, my ZOR was 4. That is what Y is. So obviously, this portion is going to have a ZOR of 6. Because 4 ZOR 6 will only give you 2. Isn't it? Yes. Or I can say, if I write it further down, 4, 2, 2, 6. What I can say is, this entire thing, this entire thing also had a ZOR of 2. And this subarray also had a ZOR of 4. So what I can say is, this guy is definitely going to have a ZOR of 6 to actually make it 4 ZOR 6 equal to 2. Otherwise, I am not going to get this prefix ZOR as 2. And I wanted the count of subarrays. So what I can say is, one subarray is this, yes, while the other one is this. It's pretty much clear. That is why I simply stored the count of prefix ZOR, right? How many times does 4 appears? Because I don't need the index. So if I can simply keep a count, I can say that there are two subarrays which will be generated. So after this, you can increment the value of count by 2 and you'll get 3. Now again, if you did not understand this, I'll give you a brief about it. Now let's assume you have taken a patch and the entire prefix uh, ZOR is XR. So I can say that the entire prefix ZOR is XR. So what I want is, I want some subarray. I want some subarray which will give me a ZOR SK. That is what I'm looking for, isn't it? I am looking for subarrays which is giving me ZOR SK. So let's assume that before this, before this, the ZOR is a Y. The value of ZOR is Y about all these elements. And all these elements have a ZOR SK. And all these elements have a ZOR as XR. So what I can write is Y ZOR K equal to XR. That is what I have written here. Now if I take the K on the other side, what I will get is Y equal to XR ZOR K. So if I can figure out how many times does this Y appear. If I can figure out how many times does this Y appear. I can say that. Those are the number of subarrays I am going to get, right? Because this division can be anywhere. Like you can get a number of subarrays, right? Now, once you have incremented your count, the next thing that you need to do is you need to push that to n because you have a prefix or of two. So you push that to n, and what you get is two comma one in the hash map. Next time you move to this four. Now, when you move to this four, you will have a two or four, which will actually give you six. Now again, that is very important. Now, what does this mean? This means that the entire prefix ZOR is giving you a ZOR as 6, which was the ZOR you are looking for. So you can say that this is one of your subarrays, which will give you ZOR as 6. So you can simply increment a count to 4. Now what is the other thing? Let's figure out what is Y. Y will be 6 ZOR 6, that is 0. So what I can say is, there are no subarrays, which will give you this Y as 0. So I will not be incrementing the count any further. And I have completed the traversal of the array. So what I can say is the total number of count of the subarrays is going to be 4. That is my answer. Now the time complexity is bigger of n log n. Now some people might argue that the time complexity can be bigger of n because hash map takes bigger of 1 if we use unordered map. Again, you can explain that to the interviewer because unordered map in the worst case takes bigger of n for the search operation. So that is the reason it's uh, safer to use map. Again, you can also use unordered map and you can explain the time complexity according to that to the interviewer. And the space complexity is going to be bigger of n because you are using a hash map to store all the prefix sum. So now let's discuss the C++ as well as the Java solution. So in the Java solution, you are initially given an array. Along with that, you are given the B, basically the ZOR which you are looking for in that subarray. So what I do is I declare a hash map that is of integer comma integer. After that, what I do is I declare count as 0 and I declare ZOR as 0. Once I've done that, I just take n as a dot length and I then start linearly traversing in the array. The first thing we always do is to take the prefix ZOR. So we're going to keep on ZORing a of i whenever we have a new element. After this, we can simply check for the value y and you know what is y. That is xr ZOR k or xr ZOR b. If that is not null, what you can do is you can add it to your count. You can easily use frequency.get to get the value because you're storing it as a key value pair. How many times XR or K appears, you can simply get it. And once you have got it, what you need to check is if, if the prefix or 
is giving you equal to equal to b or not because if it is giving you you need to increase that count because you need to consider the prefix subarray also once you are done with that you need to insert it into the hash map so you check if it previously exist in the hash map you simply get the previous value and add a one to it and insert it back into the hash map and if it doesn't exist you insert the prefix or with a one basically saying that this is the first time it appears now once you have done traversing the ent entire array you can simply return the value count uh, so it's time for the c plus plus solution so you can see that uh, in the c plus plus solution they have given you a vector a and they have also given you a b so what you need to do is you have to declare a map again you can take unordered map that is completely your wish after this you take count as zero and as xr as zero after that i'm going to linearly traverse in the vector i have to compute the prefix or what i do is every time i go in i'm going to do a prefix or with the element and then i'm going to check if the prefix subarray is giving you the subarray or as b if it is giving i increment the count that is basically i'm saying that the prefix subarray is giving me the or whatever i was requiring and once you have done with this you need to check of xr or k that is xr or b over here you simply check it in the hash map if it does exist if it does exist what you do is you increase the count by how many number of times it exists because what you are storing is key comma value pair so you can simply get it by frequency of xr or b and once you have done that you have to insert it back into the hash map that is the prefix or so you do a plus equal to one that that inserts it into the hash map once you have completed the entire traversing you can simply return the value of count which will be your total number of subarrays which is giving you zord as b so yes do not forget to hit that like button if you are loving the content